In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you, and with your spirit. Greetings, good people of God. You are listening to Catholic Meditation. I am Father Blessed Ambang Njume. Today is Wednesday, the 22nd of November, 2023. It is Wednesday of the 33rd week in Ordinary Time, Church Year A. Good morning and thanks for joining us. Today is the memorial of St. Cecilia, Virgin and Martha. Let us pray. O God, who gladden us each year with the feast day of St. Cecilia, grant, we pray, that what has been devoutly handed down concerning this handmaid of yours may offer us examples to imitate and proclaim the wonders worked in his servants by Christ your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. The first reading is taken from the second book of the Maccabees, chapter 7, verse 1 and verses 20 to 31. The responsorial psalm is taken from Psalm 17. The response to the psalm is, When I awake, I shall be filled with the vision of your presence, O Lord. The gospel is taken from St. Luke, chapter 19, verses 11 to 28. I read from the gospel. At that time, Jesus proceeded to tell a parable. Because he was near to Jerusalem, and because they supposed that the kingdom of God was to appear immediately. He said, therefore, a nobleman went into a far country to receive kingly power and then return. Calling ten of his servants, he gave them ten pounds and said to them, Trade with this till I come. But his citizens hated him and sent an embassy after him, saying, We do not want this man to reign over us. When he returned, having received the kingly power, he commanded these servants to whom he had given the money to be called to him, that he might know what they had gained by trading. The first came before him, saying, Lord, your pound has made ten pounds more. And he said to him, Well done, good servant. Because you have been faithful in a very little, you shall have authority over ten cities. And the second came, saying, Lord, your pound has made five pounds. And he said to him, And you are to be over five cities. Then another came, saying, Lord, here is your pound, which I kept laid away in a napkin. For I was afraid of you, because you are a severe man. You take up what you did not lay down, and reap what you did not sow. He said to him, I will condemn you out of your own mouth, you wicked servant. You knew that I was a severe man, taking up what I did not lay down, and reaping what I did not sow. Why then did you not put my money into the bank, and at my coming I should have collected it with interest? And he said to those who stood by, Take the pound from him and give it to him who has the ten pounds. And they said to him, Lord, he has ten pounds. I tell you that to everyone who has will more be given, but from him who has not, even what he has will be taken away. But as for those enemies of mine, who did not want me to reign over them, bring them here and slay them before me. And when Jesus had said this, he went on ahead, going up to Jerusalem. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. The theme for today's meditation is Do not blame your poor performance on others. Do not blame your poor performance on others. Last Sunday, November 19, dear friends in Christ, This same parable was read to us. Though the details of today's parable are slightly different 
from many perspectives, especially from that of Sunday. This is because Sunday's account was written by Matthew and today's is written by Luke. While Matthew recounted that each servant was given talents according to their ability, one, five, another, two, and the third, one, St. Luke recounts that there were ten servants and all ten servants were each given one pound. But both Matthew and Luke agree that only three servants give an account of how they used their money. And the third servant was not industrious enough. He was slothful, wasteful, and not enterprising. Today, let us focus once again on this third servant, but this time on why he was not as enterprising as the other two. The servant blamed his master's attitude and character for his poor performance. He spent his time brooding over what he thought or had heard or imagined his master to be. I knew you to be a very hard and exacting man, to reap where you did not sow and to gather where you did not scatter, blah, 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 blah. Yes, even if his master was all that and even much more, why did the other two yield profit? Was it not the same master they had? How did his master's character affect his work and profit? Dear good people of God, do not blame others for making you act poorly. Take your responsibility. This is what we do most times. We sit in our offices and rather than work, rather than use our time to do well for ourselves and for the company, it is the boss's name we put on the table. We talk about any and everything they are not, and we fail to realize that is valuable time we are wasting, that if we put into good use, we would have made the company or the institution better, and we would have yielded fruit. We sit in our presbyteries, and rather than spend that time doing quality work, we rather spend it talking about our bishops and how they are all what they should not be. This is what kills our spirit and application to work. The other two servants surely knew much more, very much more about their master than this third servant. But they did not let it come between them and their work. They did not let it distract them. They focused on their work. But this third servant kept brooding over all those. Some of these things he said he knew about his master might not even have been true. But they blinded and spoiled his relationship with his master and that affected his work. Beloved, we are not saying that good working conditions are not important for us to yield fruit. Neither are we saying that a good relationship with our bosses does not count for increased productivity. But what we are saying is that prove yourself a great person by bringing out perfume even from a latrine. Look at your work. Look at those you are to serve. Look at those who benefit from your good work and do not let another person's character or relationship affect you and how you do your work. Do not blame others for making you act poorly. Let them not make you mediocre and you cannot blame it on them because you take full responsibility for your actions. The other two servants could decide as well not to be productive, but they chose to do their work. They too would have sat and would have blamed their master even if he was all of what they said he was. But no, they went down and did their work and they yielded profit. Let it never be heard from us saying and blaming others, it is this person or that person who has made me not to be at my best. Wherever they have put you, whatever the conditions, give it your all and your best. Show how industrious you are and make profits however small. All for God's glory and honor and for the salvation of those for whom you render your service. Remember, Yes, your master would have given you that task. You do not do it for him. You do it for God. 
You do it for those people who benefit from the services that you render. So therefore, beloved, do your work like the other servants. Concentrate on yourself. You also have your weaknesses. Imagine those people who benefit from our services. If they too were to say, look, that priest, I will never attend mass if it were that priest. Our churches will be empty. If the students were also to say, that teacher, I will never attend his lessons or her lessons, your classrooms will be empty. We too have our own weaknesses. Let us rather focus on ourselves, focus on our work, and not blame our lack of productivity on others and their character. St. Cecilia was among the many Christians who suffered martyrdom in Rome during the second century. There is little reliable information about her life, but her complete dedication to Christ and her endurance during tortures make her an outstanding witness of Christian faith and an example for all to follow. She is the patron saint of musicians. We wish a happy feast day to all those who go by the name Cecilia and to institutions named after her. The Lord be with you. May the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, and the Son and the Holy Spirit come down on you and remain with you forever. Amen. Amen.